Hey everybody, it's Liz and I'm back to share with you a couple of charms that I created. Um, I actually made these charms for Sabrina's um, birthday challenge. Um, I didn't include them with my uh, video for the cupcakes only because I, you know, hadn't done them yet. I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out, but I made these really cute charms and I'm loving the way that they came out. Now I can't take full credit for these. I saw, um, I saw something similar on Pinterest where the lady created um, actual, you know, like little ornaments out of the uh, Tim Holtz ornate plates. See, these are my um, my charms here. So she turned them into ornaments, and I got the idea that they could just, you know, work as well as a charm with, you know, like a little lobster claw that you can attach to, you know, any of your projects if you like. So. These are the little charms that I created, and uh, first I'm going to show you real quick what I did, um, show you the charms, and I think I'm going to show you a quick tutorial at the end because these are very simple to make, and the result is so pretty. Um, it's a different way to use the, you know, the ornate plates, which most of us have, I'm sure, but I just thought that they came out really nice, so I definitely want to share how to make these with you guys. Very easy. So like I said, you start off with, you know, the ornate plate here, and if you guys know, um, you know, Tim Holtz or the ornate plates, they, uh, you get a pack of six. There's two different styles. I use this style here only because I just love, oops, I love the shape of it. I just love the oval. And it was um, a wider opening to show the little images that I was going to, you know, have in the middle. And of course, you know, you can um, use a stamp, you can use um, whatever you like. In this case, Sabrina loves the Princess Paper Collection by Prima. So I used the cute little princesses, the princess fairies that come in the uh, paper pad. I thought that was really cute. Here's the collection, the paper pad. If you guys don't know, it's the 6x6 six six paper pad. And it's got some really pretty pages where there's like a little, let me see if maybe I can show you one real quick. I want to have enough time to show you how to make them. But see like the little fairies? So that's what I did. And they fit perfectly in the opening. I thought it came out really cute. So basically, you know, you just start off with an ornate plate. And I've got, um, this is a little lobster claw, that's how you're going to be able to attach it to, you know, like a boat, your project, whatever you want to attach it to. And I just created these little tags out of the leftover papers from when I cut out the little fairy, made a little tag, made a little bow, and I have them hanging from, from the little bow. I thought that was a really cute way to give this as a gift. And, you know, I've just got some little flowers here for my stash. These were all colored from, you know, using different inks that I have here. Sorry about the glare, you guys. As you can see from the glare, I used uh, Dimensional Magic in the middle of um, the uh, ornate plate um, just to really accent the image inside. I think it came out really pretty. And, you know, these are painted, of course. I painted each one a different color. This one is like a peachy color. And the color I used for this one is this one here, uh, Folk Art, and it's a uh, seashell pink. It's almost like a peachy nude color, like a skin tone. And I thought it came out really nice. So I gave it two coats of that, and then I went over the tops of it just um, a little bit with some white acrylic paint just to bring out all the little ridges and stuff. I thought that gave it like a shabby look. And then, of course, down here I've just got some chain and a bunch of different little baubles and pearls. I've got these little, this is like a little metal heart. I think this is also by Tim Holtz. And here is, you know, some of the Tim Holtz baubles. These are from uh, Michaels. Here's a little pearl. Here's a little acrylic uh, butterfly. My daughter helped me with this. Um, I'm not a big jewelry person as far as making it. I really don't know how to create, you know, uh, things like that. So she helped me get this little butterfly um, on here so we can attach it to the chain. So it came out really cute. And um, I basically toned down the metallic look of this with just a little bit of snow text. I hope you guys are able to see that. Just dabbed it on there with like a little sponge so the chain isn't going to be, you know, a shiny silver. And uh, I did the same thing with the lobster claw up here and the little uh, jump ring. So it came out really cute and I've got these little, uh, this is from a spray. From uh, I had picked it up in LA, so I just basically cut it apart and added the little uh, little pearl drops <clears throat> into the cluster. So it's really cute. So this is the first one that I made, and I picked the different colors to coordinate with the little fairies. And so see, here's the second one. I think this one came out really cute as well. They're all very similar. The color is different, and the fairies are different, and the flowers that I used are different, and some of the charms. 
So this one's got, uh, this one was painted with pink, uh, the light pink by Craftsmart. This one you can get at Michael's. And the same thing, I just dabbed a little bit of white acrylic paint on top to pick up on all the details of the ornate plate. I've got some flowers, again, for my stash, and these are all painted different colors. Um, this one's actually was already pink, it's just for my stash, but the others were painted a darker pink. I've got the little pearl drops. Look how pretty she is, right? And lots of dimensional magic in there. Sorry about that. And then down here, it's basically the same. I've got the same type of charms on here. The only thing I changed was the uh, larger metal charm that hangs at the end. On the first one, I had a heart. This one's a little Flora de Lis. And again, I dabbed everything with some snow text to tone it down, the uh, shininess, I guess, of the metal. So it's really cute. I love it. I think it's darling. I really hope Sabrina likes these as well. And like I said, I picked the Princess Collection because I know she loves that uh, paper collection. I thought it would go well with, like, you know, some projects that she uh, would create using that collection. So hopefully she'll like them. And this one I did, uh, this one I painted in warm white. I painted it warm white, and I went over the ridges and top of that with the light pink paint. And this one's my favorite. I love that little fairy princess inside. I think she's beautiful. And I've got flowers here, and again, the little... Um, pearl, you know, little pick, same type of charms. On this one I have a crown. So they're very, very, very simple to make, you guys, and I think they came out really, really cute. So, you know, you guys could probably figure this out on your own, but I just thought I'd share real quick the way that I created them. Uh, maybe, you know, some of you want to create your own, but I thought they came out really pretty. So those are my charms for Sabrina, and uh, I'm going to show you real quick how I made them. And of course, like I said, I cannot take full credit for it. I was inspired by the lady on Pinterest. I I don't know how if I'm going to be able to link it or not, but it was basically it's because it's just a picture that on, on Pinterest. It doesn't go to like a blog or anything. But she made ornaments out of them, and I thought that was such a clever idea. So I figured I could create, you know, a charm, a chunky little charm. So let me show you real quick how I made them. And let me just kind of lay my stuff out here. So basically, like I said, you're going to start off with your ornate plate, your Tim Holtz. You have two different shapes. Either one is fine. Um, I use this one. I just really like this. And, you know, the plates come like this. I turned it, you know, around because it's got a hole on both ends already for my lobster claw and for the chain to dangle with the charms. So I'm going to use this one. So, of course, you guys know it's metal. Metal is going to be hard to paint, so I always prime my metal pieces if I'm going to paint them. So, of course, you're going to need some gesso. Just a little bit will do. You don't need to, you know, cover all the metal. You just basically need to give it like a really light coat. It's like a, you know, a tooth for the paint to adhere to. And so you just want to do that. I'm still over. And I try to get in, um, you know, how like the little openings here. I try to get in there as well. Because I'm definitely going to have, you know, I want paint on there as well. I don't want any of the metal to show. And, of course, you don't have to cover them up. You can definitely use them as is. They're already beautiful colors. You know, you have the antique silver and the, the gold and the bronze. They're beautiful just the way they are. But for my um, charms, I wanted a shabby chic look. And so I wanted to paint them, you know, the different uh, shabby colors. Okay, so I've got that, and you know what, you can let that dry on its own or speed things up using a heat tool, which I think I'm going to do, but I know I cannot um, do that over my uh, craft mat, so real quick, I'm just going to use my heat tool. Now you do have to be very careful you guys when you use your heat tool. This is a solid metal piece. It's going to be super hot. Don't ask me how I know. But uh, so you know it's good to have you know little tweezers. I'm going to turn it around so I could do the back because I did cover the back as well. It's probably not that hot anymore but just be careful. Um, I burned myself pretty bad the first time. <laughs> it hurt. So I'm just going to again put some gesso on the back. 
And like I said, it doesn't have to be, you know, a super thick coat or anything. It's just enough for the acrylic paint to grab onto so that you can uh, cover it up nicely here. So, really quick and definitely get in there and all the little opening. And I like the gesso too because it actually gives it um, a little bit of a texture. I don't know if you guys noticed it on my charms, but it, it had a little bit of a, um, you know, like a rough texture to it. And I do like that, so I didn't mind. It adds to the shabby chicness, I think. All right, so that's the back. Again, let's speed it up. good all right and now of course you know once the gesso dries you can go ahead and paint it uh, whatever color you want I am going to paint this one a warm white I'm going for a little bit of a vintage feel the image that I'm going to use inside is vintage so I want to do a warm white and uh, the warm white that I'm using is up here by folk art and it's just called warm white won't focus. But trust me on that. It's called warm white. I'm just going to use a little bit of paint here. And again, you don't need a whole lot. Okay. Now with the acrylic paint, I did give it two coats. My first coat, um, I just went in real lightly, you know, to cover the metal. And then my second coat, I went in and made sure that everything was covered, that none of the metal was showing through. Like I said, you guys don't have to be perfect when you do this step. I think the little, you know, imperfections add to the character of, you know, Chevy Chic. So, it's all good. Okay. So go ahead, and again, you can let that dry on its own, or speed things up like I like to do. I don't have any patience to wait. Let me do this side. So I always use my trusty heat tool. Sorry about all the stuff you see on there. Just my little cardboard piece I use. should be good. Now, like I said, I do give it two coats, front and back. Let me, you know what? Let's do this part. I think I've got some important writing on there. <laughs> All right. Speed things up a little. And this one, because it's going to be vintage, it's kind of cool if I miss a few spots. I'm not going to mind. But, you know, if you want to cover it all up, that's all good, too. I'm just turning it around real quick. Got to do the back as well. It is a charm that's going to kind of dangle freely, so you definitely want to cover the back. But, you know, it is up to you if you want to do that. All right. So that was done. coats of paint um you know you can go in a little better if you want um like i said i'm going for a vintage look so i don't mind if some of the metal is showing that's fine so anyways this is what my piece is going to look like so it's nice and painted i've got a few little specks where you can see some of the metal but that's cool that's the look i'm going for okay and now let's see let me get that out of the way 
Okay, so now basically you can finish, you know, you can let that finish drying. In the meantime, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and cut out your image or stamp your image, whatever you want to do. What I did to uh, make sure that I ha that the image fit in here, I just took a piece of cardstock. This is just regular cardstock, you guys. And basically what I did is I laid the piece over the cardstock. I took a pencil and I drew, I, you know, uh, traced along this oval. So what you're going to get is an oval like this. I don't know if you guys can see the pencil marks. There you go. But then what I did is when I used, uh, when I cut it, I cut it a little bit wider just so it could fit nicely in the back because you're going to want to put this back here. See how nice it fits in there? And the reason I did the cardstock is so I can use this as a template to go ahead and cut uh, my image. I didn't want pencil marks on my image because if I laid it like this, I'm going to have pencil marks on the inside. Okay? So that's, you know, you can do it. Either way, but I did a little template. I went, this is the image I'm going to use, this cute little girl. I've already drawn it. So now basically I'm just going to cut it out. And, uh, you know, this part's self explanatory. Just follow your pencil lines. I'm not even on the frame here. And you don't have to be super perfect, but it's going to be on the back. No one is going to be able to see it, but it's up to you. It, I found this way was easier to create a little oval template because I was going to make more than one. So that way I had it and I didn't have to draw in, um, you know, the oval on each one. So there we go. Alright, so there's my little image. She's so cute. And now I'm basically going to adhere it on there. I'm just going to take some glossy accents. And I'm just going to apply glossy accents to the edges. And it really doesn't matter if you get in the middle if you want that glossy look like I did. Because I'm just going to go in and fill it with either, you know, the glossy accents, dimensional magic, whatever you want to use. Okay, but the glossy accents I like to use on the edge because this way it really adheres uh, to the metal piece. that and then you can check the back oopsie I probably should do that let me see here we'll just put in the back okay all right so in the meantime I'm gonna let that you know sit there for a while and you know I can create my little charms for the sake of the video I've already done the little chain so this is the little chain that's gonna hang from the bottom let me see where the jump ring here it is Okay, so I've already created my little chain. Basically, I just took a little piece of chain, added, you know, the different baubles, a charm at the end, um, all using jump rings, and I'm going to attach this piece down here at the bottom. Super easy. Where's my tools? And like I said, I'm not a jewelry expert at all. My daughter actually helps me quite a bit when it comes to charms, but uh, I think I need to start... Anyway, here, my... I need to start, um, you know, doing more of them. I really like charms, and I don't have the patience to make them. A lot of times I ask her, but I definitely want to start just doing them on my own. Ugh, see, I'm not the greatest at this, but basically you just want to open it and get it in there. I'm sure you guys know how to do that. You don't need me to explain, but just in case there's someone new in there. See, look already falling apart <laughs> every time right I was doing so good but every time I try to do a tutorial something like this happens give me one second I'm gonna get off camera real quick just so I can bring it closer and I can see it but anyways this is gonna go in here ah goodness I need to open it more all right so you want to just attach that on there. Make sure it's closed all the way. Which this one is not. Okay. So there we go. So that's going to be the bottom part. And then I've got my lobster claw. And I just used the regular little lobster claw. This one's from Michael's. I think it's a medium. There's a larger one and some smaller ones. But whichever one you want is fine. And again, I've already got a jump ring in there. All I'm going to do is just open it. And that one is going to go right on top. 
I think I've got too much paint on this one. There we go. And then you just close it. All right. So there is my little charm. See? Pretty easy, right? And now, of course, you're going to go in, you're going to do your dimensional magic um, to cover the image, and you can just decorate it any way you want. Like I did my other charm here, basically. So there's a finished one. So, you know, go ahead and add your dimensional magic, your glossy accents, your flowers, pearls, whatever you want. You can even decorate it on both sides. It's up to you what you want to do. It's just a small little tutorial to show you how I've made mine, but, you know. So this one's really cute. So now I'm just going to add flowers and glossy accents, and it'll be perfect. So that's it. And, um, again, let me show you real quick my pretty little charm. Here's the first one. And I've got a mess, I know. I hope I didn't get you guys all confused. Here's the other one. Look how pretty. I'm so happy. I'm actually really proud of myself for doing this. You guys can hear my dog ignore him. I think there's someone outside right here. Really cute. So anyways, you guys, those are my charms that I created for Sabrina. I hope she really likes them, and I hope you like them too. And I would love to hear if you're willing to try the tutorial. It was really easy, really cute way to create some little charms using the Tim Holtz or Nate Blake. So thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.